Okay, today's uh, lesson is about giving checkmate. I uh, run a lot of chess tournaments, and most of those chess tournaments are with primary school children. And quite often, actually, uh, a situation will occur where someone has a position like this. They've got two extra rooks than their opponent. Their opponent's just got their king left, and they can't win the game. There's a rule in chess called the 50 move rule, and if you can't get checkmate in 50 moves, when your opponent just has their lone king, it's a draw. The 50 move rule is a little bit more complicated than that, but uh, that's that's the essence of it. If they've got their king left, you've got to get checkmate in 50 moves or it's a draw. And I've seen players frequently uh, fail to win from this position. And this is a very easy situation to win. And it's called the electric fence checkmate. And it's my favorite checkmate, and it's the first checkmate I learned as a kid. And it's a very popular checkmate with those that learn it because it means that if you've got even just two pawns left, you can always win the game because you can promote those two pawns and get two queens or two rooks or a queen and a rook and then do the electric fence checkmate. Now, if you have a take, if you have a look at this position, you'll see the king is in the center of the board. And when a king's in the center of the board, he's got eight squares he can move to. So obviously one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares he can move to. Now when a king is on the edge of the board, for instance, if this king was down here at uh, E1, he'd only have five choices of square to move to. And the way you checkmate a lone king is that you have to get him to the edge of the board to checkmate him. So the first thing you're trying to do is to force the king to the edge of the board. That's where he's got less squares that he can move to. And so it's easier to checkmate. So always remember, if you're having trouble checkmating a lone king, you need to get him to the edge of the board. And once you've got him to the edge of the board, there's less choices for the king, and it's easier to work out a checkmate. And all checkmate is, is reducing the king's choices to zero. And if you keep that in mind, that'll make checkmating easier. Checkmating is a net. And each square is like a link on the net, each square around the king. If you can protect each square around the king, it's a checkmate. Okay. So the electric fence uh, is called the electric fence because it starts out by making a fence. So if this rook moves up here, um, we've now created a fence. The fence is all of the uh, area along there. This king now can't move on to the third rank of the chessboard because it's illegal to move into check. So this is the fence part of the electric fence. Now let's say that black is a good player and he knows that to, to avoid checkmate he should try to stay in the center of the board. Um, then he'll make a move that keeps him near the center. If you're the person who's in the situation of having just your king left, you should always try and stay near the center of the board and you might be lucky enough to make it to 50 moves. So let's say the king goes here. Now we do the electric part. I've pointed out that the third rank was a fence. Rook comes down, gives a check along the fourth rank. And so you'll see that now this whole line here has become electrified. Uh, this is a fence here, and here's the electric part. So the third rank and the fourth rank of the chessboard are now off limits to the king. He can't stay there. He has to move up the chessboard. And so he's forced onto the fifth rank. Let's say he moves here. And now what happens is that we, because of their previous move, this is a fence. Now the rook moves up here, gives check. Once again, we now have the fence and the electrification of uh, the fifth rank has occurred. And so the king is forced up the board. And what we're doing is we're forcing him towards the, the side of the board, the edge of the board, where he'll have less choices. So now we repeat the process. We give a check on the other side. The other name for this checkmate is the ladder checkmate. And I think you can see why. It's like climbing up a ladder. So the king goes here now. Rook comes up, check. Once again, here's our fence. Here's our electrification, forcing the king onto the last row. And now, of course, the king has a problem because here's, here's a fence he can't cross. And so when this rook comes up here, it's checkmate. Every square the king could move to 
is check. And so that's a checkmate. So that's the electric fence checkmate. And it's a nice technique you can use. Uh, the thing to remember is that the rooks work together in, in straight lines. So they take out rows of squares at a time. You can also do this checkmate across the board, of course. So in this position here, you can put either rook along the board and create your fence. Here's your fence now. And this rook now gives the electrification. Oh, black has to move, of course. And being a clever player, he'll try and stay around the center of the board. Now this rook does the, elect the electric part of the electric fence. Here's your fence. Here's your electrification of the uh, e-file, forcing the king over to the left-hand side of the board. So checkmate in this particular case is going to take place along the a-file. Okay, now the king moves here. This is the only time you can go wrong in the electric fence. If you just blindly continue with, uh, with the checkmate pattern, then you lose your rook. And you don't want to do that. So, after the, in this position here, don't blindly follow the pattern. Realize that the king is attacking the rook. And all you do is you use the fact that the rook can move a lot further than the king. And so you just move your king, rook right down the other end where he's safe. And he's now safe. And if the rook, king's clever, he'll move here so that this rook can't come across. And you just do the same thing with the other rook. Just run it right away from the king. And now the king is nowhere near the rooks, and we can continue our process of checkmating with the electric fence. Now we've electrified the d-file. There's a fence along the e-file. The king can't cross, and so he's forced across the board. And we just continue with this process. And so we check the king. Across he goes. We check again. Now, a clever king would come here. And once again, if we blindly follow our pattern, we lose our rook. So we don't want to do that. We run our rook up the other end of the board. And a clever king would now come here. Because again, if we blindly follow our pattern, we lose our rook. So we run our rook up the other end of the board. When he when the rook comes down to a2, now what we do is we run our rook right up the other end, and now he's help helpless. This rook here is creating a fence he can't cross, and no matter which of the two moves the king chooses, the next move is checkmate. So checkmate with the rook here. So that's the electric fence checkmate. With a queen and a rook, it's even easier because the queen guards the rook. So we check. We check. Now, if these were both rooks, then we wouldn't be able to play to this square because the king would be able to take the rook. But because this is a queen, we don't have to worry about that at all. We just go check. The queen's guarding the rook, so it's illegal for the king to take the rook. And so we've got our fence, we've got the rook now taking out all the squares on the 6th rank, and the king must move up to the 7th, queen gives check, and let's check mate. So the electric fence is even easier with a queen and a rook, two queens it's even easier still. And from a position like this, you should be able to work out just how quickly you can give a checkmate. Uh, should be checkmate in how many moves, do you think? There's many, many ways to checkmate here. But it's never going to be more than six moves to get to checkmate. There's a check. King comes across. Oh, can't move into check, of course. Comes down here. Check. So there's your second move. King is forced across the board. Check. Third move. Check. Fourth move. 
And now in this position here, you can get a little bit tricky. You can play up here. Check. King moves across. And we're getting close to checkmate now. Just play a quiet move. And no matter where he goes, checkmate. Now, probably with the last position here with the queens, it would have been faster checkmates. As long as you're careful that you don't lose a piece by putting it next to the king, it's just a matter of time before you checkmate. The basic idea of the electric fence is that you use your pieces to take out rows of squares at a time, either vertically up the board or horizontally across the board, taking out a whole set of squares at a time. So it's a fence method because a king can't cross a row of squares if, it's, if they're attacked by a queen or a rook. Where people go wrong checkmating with, uh, with a queen and a rook or, or two rooks and so on is that they try to either use the two pieces in different directions. In other words, they have one piece taking out vertical squares and another piece taking out horizontal squares. Or they, if they're using a queen, they do diagonal checks. So rather than um, checking horizontally or vertically, they do diagonal checks, diagonally across the board. Diagonal checks aren't as strong as horizontal or vertical checks because the king can slip through the fence between the checking. So in this position here, the queen's checking the king, but it's not really a fence. In other words, if he comes here and you now do a check again, he can slip back towards the center of the board. So it's much more powerful to be doing vertical or horizontal checks. This position here, queen can come back here, check, and you're forcing him across the board. So the king could come over here. Again, if you ever run into any trouble of any kind, you just run your pieces a long way away from the king. King goes up to this square to stop the rook coming across. So the rook just drops down the other end with the queen. And we resume our electric fence pattern. And that's checkmate. So electric fence is a nice, simple checkmate you can use to win when you've got a queen and a rook or two rooks. So even this position is a win for you. Pawn goes up to the end of the board. You can grab a rook if you want. Of course, you could get a queen. Grab yourself a queen. And then from there, electric fence technique. So put a fence in place. Because the piece is sort of blocking each other here, we can, we can get fancy if we want to. Probably easier just to run the queen down the board, give a check here. And now we use the technique. The rook is making the fence. So now the queen comes and makes the electric or electrifies the e file. The e file now being electrified here. King's forced across, and we continue with our technique. Can't move into check, of course. Check. Forced across. And there's your checkmate. Okay, so there's the electric fence. Good luck with, with using it in your games.